Hello and welcome to episode 51 of Shared Discovery, the show and podcast dedicated to sharing the many exciting and enjoyable aspects of games and gaming. I'm your host, Victor, and today I am joined once again by my co-host, Ron, but I also have it in the notes here that today we're called the Gamers Roundup? The Gamers Roundup! Okay, that's what we're doing today. W- welcome to the Gamers Roundup, actually. That's what, mm-hmm. uh, And if you're confused where that comes from, that's because we're doing an AI episode. Yay, AI. Mm-hmm. So I gave AI, uh, ChatGBT, 3.5 a prompt, and... That's what we're talking about today. We haven't talked about this before the show, so no. we're just, we're just going to roll with it. But Let's see what it's got for us. Yeah, they don't have an intro in here. I don't think they have a normal... No, they don't have an intro segment, so we'll go through our normal one. They have like a read-off that we could do, but I want to know what games you've been playing lately. Like normal. Yeah. Round me up. Um, so recently I finished Metal Gear Solid Five. And I'm pretty close to finishing Metal Gear Solid. And in the interim, uh, just kind of reading a bit lately. Nice. You know, trying to hit the books. But yeah, stick into those. Um, really satisfying games to finish. Nice. And um, really thoughtful, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots to say about lots of things. This is Metal Gear. Check out our shared discoveries episode for that we we dive pretty deep into that oh yeah i think so what about yourself victor what have you been playing still lately? playing wow shocking no wow. <laughs> uh, i'm doing currently doing a challenge mm-hmm. uh, the server i'm on they have challenge runs you can do starting at level one and i'm doing okay. uh it's called resolute so it shrinks down the xp so you can have no xp modifiers it's what? just regular one times rate, no boost, nothing. But if you get to the end, you get a special mount. So that's a challenge I've been doing, and it's as part of the research that for, as we talked about a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, uh, for prepping for Warcraft D&D. Of course. Uh, I'm like, have I been playing anything else? I've been, do you count AFK RuneScape as playing the game? Mm. <laughs> I would count that. Because it's always on. Do I play Cookie Clicker? I would think so. Fair. I do have to move the character. Yeah, and you have to make the decision to keep going or to stop. True, know? true. So I've been playing RuneScape. In the background, I have the goal of getting to combat level 100. I don't want to train it by myself. So there are these sand crabs that you, they do basically no damage, have low defenses. And you can stand in the middle of groups of them, and they'll just attack you. And you'll auto-retaliate and once every 10 minutes, your aggro rate uh, will decrease and they won't attack you anymore. So you run off screen, wall on back in, and continue. So that's what I've been doing because I don't want to train these stats. I'm up to level 95, getting there. Started at 73, so hitting a lot, killing a lot of crabs. Uh, so I've been playing RuneScape, if anyone cares. <laughs> Do I even care? I don't know. It's, uh, a, it's a thing to do. Mm, yeah. Number, numbers go up, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Uh, but before we get into this episode of the Gamers Roundup, mm-hmm. make sure you check us out at gamersroundup at gmail.com. Is that a real thing? It's not a real thing. <laughs> 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 uh, on our Instagram, Gamers Roundup Show. I might have to make it a thing, <laughs> just as a joke. <laughs> Where we only wear sunglasses. Or it's like all inverted. Right, what if we put an inverted filter on these? Polarized? Yeah, there it's we go. Just our show, but... We, we switch seats. <laughs> uh, but for real, if you have any questions Damn. or you're interested of, uh, in AI or any of the topics we talk about today, you can email us for real at shareddiscoveryshow at gmail.com. And you can find us on YouTube and Instagram, same place, Shared Discovery. And definitely go to YouTube to watch us play D&D. We're in a cool marble dungeon at the moment, and uh, we're trying to figure out why these creatures keep attacking, these flying, exploding creatures keep attacking us. So check that out. But 
you want to get into this, Rob? I guess we have to, don't we, <laughs> I think so. So we talked about this a while back, like months ago. Mm-hmm. Last year, even. Uh, oh, wow. We, we talked about, wouldn't it be funny to just give a prompt to one of these AIs, this chat GBT, and see what it pops up and just roll with it. So we're finally here. And here's the prompt that I gave, okay? So write me show notes for a one-hour gaming podcast. The content of those notes is about current gaming stories on April 22nd, 2024 for two co-hosts. So out of that prompt, generated it, and that's where it came up with the podcast title of the Gamers Roundup. And the title of the episode is April 22nd, 2024 gaming news update very appealing title there ron <laughs> gaming news update update so that's what we're doing we're doing some gaming news updates i guess some segments for us and it even gave us a couple of host names so here's the two co-hosts that we're going to be for the episode you pick one i'll read through these and then you pick one and I'll read the other. <laughs> so first up we have alex the tech-savvy gamer with a knack for analyzing industry trends and exploring gaming innovation. We also have Sarah. You heard that right. Sarah, the passionate gamer who loves diving deep to game lore and discussing the latest releases with fellow enthusiasts. Well, obviously, since I'm the least cynical of the two and I enjoy discussing new releases... All the time, I should be Sarah, right? You're going to be Sarah for this episode? I'll be Sarah for this episode if you would like to be Alex. Uh, I can be Alex for this episode. Are you less cynical? No. Is that a true statement? (laughs) (laughs) How do you measure? We're already lying at the beginning. (laughs) I don't know. That's a close race between the two of us. Uh, Very close. But I do think Sarah uh, really... Relates to you, you know. You like to deep dive into the game lore. We had that whole episode of Metal Gear Solid. True. I'm very passionate about games and gaming as like uh, being legitimate, you know, form mm-hmm. of expression. And the lore is wonderful. I do like industry trends. I do love my statistics. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't say I'm tech savvy. Uh, but we won't actually use these names. I just thought right. it was funny. I didn't expect for the AI to create hosts. Hosts, yeah. That's so interesting. It's weird. I it's like it, it made its whole own world. It really did. Yeah. It like gave us personalities and everything. Like so. we wouldn't have people for this. But anyway, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Oh, here's the intro that it uh, gave for us. So I'll, I'll read off mm-hmm. the Gamers Roundup intro. Welcome back to Gamers Roundup. In this episode, Alex and Sarah dive into the latest gaming stories making waves on April 22nd, 2024. From exciting announcements to unexpected developments, they've got all the updates you need. It's it's very YouTuber uh, face. Uh, you know what I mean? Like YouTuber. It's like, like clickbait article. Clickbait, yeah. You know, like they, they scanned all of the articles you get on Google. Yeah. What's the most uh, hook that you can put yeah, into literally. an intro? Mm-hmm. Making waves. Serious. So let's make waves with this first segment. Let's make some waves. Actually, everyone knows this first segment because we've done doing the Gamers Roundup for years. So years. Y'all love it. Y'all know it. We're back with Hot Topics. I'm so confused. Hot <laughs> Topics, segment one. Okay. You want to talk about the VR breakthrough? VR. Woo. Something about... The latest advancements in virtual reality technology. Do you know any advancements so, in VR technology? As the tech savvy <laughs> co-host here, who has definitely used VR more than one time, mm-hmm. I do actually know about this uh, very, very lightly. But this is, there's a new... I actually don't know how new this is because the AI is a little outdated, but there's a thing called haptic feedback. And it's supposedly going to revolutionize VR to make it even more immersive. Oh. And so this haptic feedback from being the tech-savvy host, mm. it, it's really interesting. So what I saw is there's like a claw glove that 
gets on to all of your extremities so you can feel even more the sensations as it comes through. So it like has resistances and stuff? Yeah. Like, say you're touching an apple, it'll like stop your hand from closing completely. Yeah, it's like, really interesting. Ooh. So it, what, you know, having done a lot of research on this, I think this is going to expand VR even further path probably because it is I personally think that was a big problem with VR is that it doesn't have a lot of haptic feedback so you're just flailing around the room mm -hmm. you can hurt yourself and also it kind of makes you sick yeah. when you use it because of the dissonance yeah but with more feedback I feel like it'd be easier and I'm really ex I'm really interesting to, to try these setups mm -hmm. right because I had a really nauseating experience with VR the first time I used it. Oh yeah, that's probably that's the most common. nauseous I've been. Yeah, I got really lightheaded, but it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. Such a fun experience. It was um, sword and sorcery. <laughs> I've heard good things about this. Where you're just you're just a wizard, and enemies are coming at you. There's weapons and stuff spread around. On one hand, you got magic wheel. Mm -hmm. You can combine your magics. Mm -hmm. And then with this wheel, one of them's the force. You can just grab things. So I was just grabbing dudes and hitting them, like by the leg and just hitting other guys with them. And then you can pick up swords and the other, and it feels really good. The mm -hmm. mechanics are really good. So I'm wondering if this haptic feedback can help ground me so I don't lose my sense of where I am. Because that, I think, is what led to that nausea. Mm -hmm. That lightheadedness, that nausea is. Mm -hmm. It felt cool, but I wasn't grounded. Mm. Have you used VR before? I have not in any mm. serious way used VR. I think when I was a kid, there's like games in uh, arcades occasionally mm. where they would have yeah. like VR, try it out, see 3D, and they were trash and like barely games to begin with yeah. so i've never really caught on to this whole vr thing going on i'm kind of skeptical of a lot of the innovations yeah. like meta and uh the metaverse yeah. and stuff like and there was like a game that used vr and blockchain to like oh yeah do weird stuff it just seems really scuzzy and i'm kind of waiting for the dust to settle on this whole thing though. i think so too and I, I think this kind of comes with new gaming developments right think mm -hmm. about you need some time for it to settle my experience mm -hmm. with that i think is the playstation 3 yes mm -hmm. early adopters always pay they always pay and when that thing came out like 1100 1200 1, like scalpers were charging like crazy on that thing crazy and you see that happen more and more with consoles mm -hmm. and games that can be scalped yep. it's like so give it time to settle and after it's settled it's going for four to six hundred bucks mm -hmm. right give it time to settle see what the hardware can do see right. what niche it fills and that's how i that's how i felt for vr for the longest time because those setups are expensive oh yeah and there are some, even in the beginning, there were some cheaper setups. I think there was one that you could use with your phone and stuff. Mm, and mm -hmm. who knows how those work. But I personally don't have the money to yeah. like try all these different exactly. VR systems. And see. so I'm going to let time figure it out. Yeah, right? time bring the price down. And then maybe make with this haptic more... feedback, mm -hmm. it'll make it even more appealing. Because now I'm not vomiting my guts <laughs> yeah, out. Exactly. Trying to play Half-Life Alex. Yeah, because the developers mm. will always take something good and take it too far of like you need to live in vr no 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 i need to have a fun goofy wizard experience yeah i'm already living yeah. i don't need to do it on top of yeah. my life too mm -hmm. this isn't the matrix like well 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 don't go that way yeah, hold, I... on. <laughs> hold on hold <laughs> on wait wait we have a theory section later don't later <laughs> so we had the... i thought that was you know really interesting to development for VR and we'll see how well that it gets implemented into the mainstream. Sweet. Up so, next, what yeah. do we got next in Hot Topics? The rise of indie gems. Uh, we will now proceed to highlight <laughs> the growing popularity of indie games spotlighting recent releases that have captured the attention of gamers and critics alike. 
I feel like this is one of the topics that are a little out of date. Little, it is a little out of date because I think indie, the indie rise like is already here. It, it's happening. It's happened. Yeah, like we're in it. Hades, <laughs> Power World, Kenshi, Terraria was Terraria, Minecraft. <laughs> Uh, we're here. Uh, we're, we're doing we're the thing. Here, like, I'm seeing more and more like AAA games, like just being empty, hollow, like s- fun boxes. Yeah. Like they're they're nothing more than a diorama. Mm-hmm. Whereas like all these indie games that are coming out have the depth I'm looking for. Uh, uh, like Cooking Mama, mm-hmm. you know, or uh, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Ooh, Time. I love that one. I haven't heard yeah. of Cooking Mama. You cook with mama. Like, I love it. It was like a Nintendo thing, but a third-party Nintendo game yeah. or whatever. So, like, okay, technically an indie game, mm-hmm. an indie studio that was bought by Nintendo. I still count it. Eh. They're not AAA. Yeah. So, I feel it's close. I count that. I count that. Yeah, yeah. Single A, is that a thing? I don't know. B-tier game? B-tier, yeah, like double A. But still, there, there's, there's a huge, like, gap in that area that Mm -hmm. middle ground right between like the triple a and then outright horrible there's a gap here Mm -hmm. it's a niche and it's being filled by indie games and i love it i love that it's being filled too and i love Mm -hmm. that more and more people are becoming accepting of indie games Mm -hmm. because of we're losing trust in triple a developers about time about time (laughs) they're just trying to milk us for loot boxes and loot boxes. boxes. Whales. They call us whales. That's not, an insult. I'm not a whale. I'm not that big. I don't have the <laughs> I don't have that much storage for money. <laughs> and I can't fill it all with money. Come on. And so this yeah, I think this one is out of date, but um, it's still on it's target. here. It's mm-hmm. still on target because indie games are here. Yeah. Look at the recent success of Power World. Right, twenty million copies sold. Ridiculous. And people want games that are fun, that aren't held to the standards of a board, a committee to make us money. Right, investors, they they don't want to hold to these standards. Oh, so people are turning more and more to indie games because these indie games prioritize fun. The thing we're here fun. for. The thing we're here for. We're here exactly. That was Power World's whole thing. We don't have a story. It's very loose. We have journals, whatever, but everything you do is fun. We'll get to the story later. We just want this to be a fun experience. There's no loot boxes. You're going to pay 30 bucks one time. You're going to have a great time. And ever since, they've already been putting out new content. They've been putting uh, patches to fix things every single week. Meanwhile, and, and <laughs> Minecraft started out as an indie game, yeah, and it's now it's the best selling game ever. Meanwhile, you get triple A games that are like, not only are we going to deliver a bare bones experience, but we want you to pay upwards of 70 80 dollars now because oh. 50, 50 and 60 is not enough for these awesome games, so we have to raise the price. That's that's bull. Oh, and don't worry, FOMO, you can play the game three days early. Oh, if you pay more. If you pay more. Oh. If you pay us $100, play it three days earlier than everyone else. Three days. Think about it. And, you know, in the past, the skin that we would have given you anyway, it just would have been in the game. If you pay another $10, you'll, yeah, you'll get it. They're selling unfinished products for more than they're worth. You know, I think. And then there's indie games. Minecraft is really mm-hmm. interesting because Minecraft started out as an indie game. Mm-hmm. Just a Java internet browser game. Wonderful, beautiful thing. And it would be interesting to look at when it just bridged the gap to mainstream to AAA. What does that quality look like for it? Yeah, when it got bought out yeah. by Microsoft, like, mm-hmm. what changed? Mm-hmm. And... Uh, from what I understand, they've done a good job of keeping the spirit of things, but yeah, is it still an indie game? Right. I don't think it fits that bill anymore, but is there a change between the design philosophy of the game now that it's not? Mm. Now that it's moved out of that indie space? Don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. Only time will tell. Yeah.
But so that is the raw. We're at the top. If we're at the top. We're not at the top. They're no. still going up. Look at what Power World just did. I've been to the top of the mountain. We're like it's we've beautiful. been to the top, and I see another higher mountain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's indie games. We love them. Mm. We play them all. Like Larian them. started out as an Indian, Indian, indie Indian. studio, <laughs> Indian studio. They definitely didn't. Why are they Norway or something? Norway. That's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun though. So, but they started out as an indie company. Yeah. Look where they are now, and they still have those philosophy behind them of like you're gonna pay one time for this core experience. Yeah, I think that's to me that's what sets apart the indie space mm-hmm. is the mindset of why you make a game so up next in hot topics we have gaming and mental health okay taking a turn for the more serious here it's all serious it's video games it's all can't serious. have fun it's all serious there's no fun in video games <laughs> there's no fun <laughs> come on <laughs> but i i did like this topic i like that this included this because honestly this is always a hot topic mm. this has been a hot topic since video games came out yeah the what, early what days. they're always trying to pin um gun violence on video games mm-hmm. and it's like no 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 um and so this this section hmm. yeah is looking at where do gaming and mental health overlap right mm-hmm. and what are initiatives in the community are there to bring attention to mental health and gamers right mm-hmm. and so my my thought process in this is the media for a long time has like may demonize games as these things that okay you're going to ruin your lives mm-hmm. you're not going to do anything else they're not healthy they're addicting they're addicting you're going to be a mass shooter you're going to be more violent mm-hmm. but what we've seen and as we've done these episodes is that one of the most the number one reasons people play video games is stress relief Mm-hmm. Just to get away from the violence yeah. and away from the pressures of the mm-hmm. world. Exactly. It's escapism. Just like why do people read books or watch movies? Mm-hmm. Right? Exactly. And so there, to me, I think it's important to reframe and say, well, there are three billion gamers in the world. Three billion minimum, right? Minimum. minimum. That, that's going up every day, right? Mm-hmm. Minimum gamers in the world that mostly are playing for stress relief and as part of this process, they are, we know stress relief lowers blood pressure, helps them, improves other parts of their lives if they have a way to decompress. Mm-hmm. And you're also getting practical skills when you play games too, like mm-hmm. coordination, reaction, uh, like deep thinking, things we've talked about in episode two of the podcast. Episode two, go check it out. Check it out. Reasons to play games. So good. And so... I, and what research, psychological research says, says is that violent video games don't cause violence. They make people more... Um, Probably aware of violence. More aware of violence, but also like less likely to react to it. Oh, interesting. Right, so they're more op- they become more okay with it. And so that's, that's the difference. It doesn't cause violence, but it le- makes you more... Admissible to that's not the word, but you know what I mean, you know. So they're like, Yeah, yeah, that's normal, it normalizes it. That's what yeah, I mean. it normalizes yes, violence, yes. but I feel like that's not unique to video but games, exactly. Just watch the news, literally. <laughs> I feel like the news, and that's something Metal Gear Solid references mm-hmm. a lot, is like the news is constantly pushing like ideas and agendas and violence and the world is violent and they only focus on like negative stories Mm. and stuff like that but like what if we focused on like more positive things like the stress relief right there's stress and anxiety it comes from everywhere in the world and it destroys you at a genetic like a foundational level oh yeah stress literally tears down your DNA strands. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if we're going to get at the topic of violence, then we should talk about violence in the culture. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, art is informed by and informs the culture. So it's a feedback loop. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing, too. Like, I like this comparison to mm-hmm. the news, right? What mm-hmm. benefits does the news have? You become more knowledgeable of the world around you, more awareness, but also that violence, you become 
more exposed to how awareness violent things can goes be. Goes up, awareness. but stress also goes up. Mm-hmm. Right? What happens with games? Like mm. stress goes, goes down. down. And awareness can go up. It can go up, it, but it's, it's, it's definitely going to stay, stay the same. Exactly. Right? So if we're putting it on purely, we know decreasing stress mm-hmm. is important for so many things. Relationships, physical health, mental health, emotional Everything. health. Yes. Maybe don't watch the news. Play video games. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> we're taking but, shots at the, the other But the, the real answer is, lim- <laughs> is limiting it, right? Yeah. Because what they find is that most gamers, they, they're like, well, addiction. You're going to play eight hours a day. Blah, blah, blah. Are th- I mean, Majority of gamers don't, are don't. like middle th- 30s males that play an hour a day on average. Eight hours a week, which equates to just over an hour a day. And that tracks because... I myself like variety. Mm-hmm. A lot of people I know like variety. They're not going to just play the game continuously. They're going to be like, oh, I'll watch an episode of my show. I'll play some game. Oh, my buddy called. I'll chat with him, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just another form of entertainment to break up the day exactly. and de stress. It doesn't have to be an addiction. It's everything in moderation, even moderation. Exactly. Just. Take care of yourself. Exactly. <laughs> Please. That, I think that's a good good uh, point to end on for hot topics. Heck yeah. Just take care of yourselves. Yeah. I like those. I feel like the AI... Those were good points. That's some good... I like that. Good ideas. Well, let's head into the next section. Let's here. go deeper. Let's go deeper. Yes. yes. So, up next, we have game releases. This one. <laughs> Segment two. Segment two, game releases. So, what are we going to do, Ron? <laughs> um, it says here that we're going to return to Rapture, Victor. <laughs> what is Rapture, Ron? Oh boy, uh, have I got news for you. There's an exciting <laughs> upcoming release for the remastered edition of Bioshock. Upcoming? Yeah, five five or six years ago <laughs> upcoming. <laughs> what? Oh wow, we should talk about Bioshock. And it's un- iconic underwater city of Rapture. What? Rapture's underwater. <laughs> Boy, howdy. How to get there? Um some crazy megalomaniacal rich man built it at the bottom of the sea in secret somehow. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a spoiler? <laughs> Okay, we can't get into the semantics about the definition of spoiler. Okay, let's not do that. That's <laughs> so this track. one is really <laughs> off track AI because yeah, it's like, where are you going? the Bioshock Remastered <laughs> Edition came out years ago. Mm-hmm. Years ago. But I've played it all the way through. It's, it's pretty decent. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. We, we had a whole episode about talking about the theories. Didn't yours bug through. out at the end? Yeah. So my hard drive burnt out. Oh, that's what it was. But since it's an older game, because I wasn't playing the remaster, I was playing oh. the original because people are. I like to experience the game that it was intent the way it was intended okay. the first time. I can dig and that then, authenticity. And then I sometimes I'll compare right because mm-hmm. remasters can, and I will often do change the experience a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's not a remake; it's a remaster. Right. So, so what did they change? What did they change? So I played that first one, but the first one didn't have cloud syncing. So Too my old. hard drive burnt out, and right at the end there, I missed I missed the big reveals. I went and watched it because I'm like I'm not gonna play through this all again. No. But oh man, it's come so on, so, criminal. so close, oh. so close, man. Because they didn't have time for the episode, man. Uh, so yeah, that's Rapture. We're back. I haven't played number two. I've heard Ooh. it's good but worse. Yeah, it's a good yeah. game, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that Bioshock Infinite is just modern game design. It yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. kind of is prioritizes like modern fluffy game mechanics yeah. and like stats. They tried to make like a game that came out in 2010, but they couldn't quite do it. Is mm-hmm. my impression. So then they just had to release what they had. Okay. It's yeah. just very bare bones. Yeah. Some people say they like the combat, but like... I've heard the combat. Is, that's where I'm coming from with like the modern approach. Like the combat feels modernized, faster. Right. And so that's what I've heard. Bigger is really, arenas. Really good about that game. Yeah. But it's just more Bioshock. More Bioshock. And like, in the sky, though? In the story, I feel like kind of... 
it's good, but it's not like involved. Mm. A lot of Bioshock is critiquing sort of like you have choice in games, but do you have choice in games? But yeah. then it falls victim to no, no, you don't have choice in games. And this is actually a very linear experience and every choice you make has no bearing on the mm-hmm. ending. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's that was like the core tenant of the first game. Right, and mm-hmm. it like kind of lies to you. Mm-hmm. Even in the first game, it's like the lie though is part of the twist yeah. where they're like, oh, you didn't have control this whole time and you're always being controlled by someone else. Mm. In, in, in Bioshock Infinite, it's sort of like you don't have control, but like you can still make choices, but those don't mean anything and you're always going to the same place no so matter what. It's interesting too because that kind of is when the, when you get the joke is it worth telling creating that experience all over again? And like telling that communicating that message again? And in a way that I feel like is not as adept mm. as the first Bioshock. The first mm-hmm. Bioshock like I guess did its thing. Yeah. Where Infinite kind of like it meanders. Sure. It doesn't really know where it's going. It wanted to tell, like, a story of many worlds and, like, yeah. an alterable reality and, like, your choices matter. There's a lot of choices in the game mm-hmm. where you can choose this or that, but they're purely aesthetic. Okay. Empty. Yeah. I don't know. It's, so, yeah, okay. it's a so complicated game. I think it's a worthwhile message to tell. It's really important. Mm-hmm. But... It's not. I feel like it's not going to have as much weight the second time if you don't spin it somehow. If you don't like, I don't know. I haven't played Infinite, but I'm just spitballing with what you're giving me. Here. It's it's something that's for sure. Well, anyway, we return to Rapture. Mm-hmm. You want to leave Rapture? I think it's time we leave Rapture. <laughs> okay. I don't What's... like this place. No, it's too wet. It's way too wet. It's <sighs> creepy down here. Really? Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Up next, we are going to talk about Dragon Age Rebirth, everyone's favorite game. I have heard of this game? Question mark? I sort of have heard of this game. And the reason I say sort of is because Dragon Age Rebirth does not exist, AI. (laughs) AI is like I literally had to look this up. I'm like, that sounds like it would be a game title. It sounds like it, right? I was waiting for this moment. I love this. <laughs> I love this. This is fantastic. I tried so to pull a fast one. It's actually Dragon Age Reborn. And what that is, that is an updated mod, modded version of the, I think, the first Dragon Age. Okay. So, it's so like, I don't know where the rebirth came from. It's not even a real release. It's no. like a mod. Yeah, it's just a mod. It came out in 2020, so dating this uh, AI a little bit here. And so I, I guess I don't know what to talk about here other than it's really interesting that everything else is real. Everything else has been real so far, but we got our first blunder. <laughs> <And> our <laughs> oh, yeah. What do you think? Okay, so... What do you think of the next installment of the Dragon Age series? Yeah, you know, what do you think it'll be like if they do release Dragon Age? Microtransactions. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. Good, good okay, answer. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so uh, good. Then that, that's what the story will right, base, be based around: is you becoming the perfect whale, you. and the gameplay mechanics mm-hmm. will be shopping. Oh, definitely. We be shopping. We be shopping. Have you played the... Have you heard of the actual newest Dragon Age that came out this past month? I have no interest, but... Yeah, tell me tell me about it. Single, <laughs> single player game with micro transactions all over the place. And all the things, to their credit, you can get all those things in the game, but you're uh, paying for advantage. Like, you can... Get a teleport stone hours into the game, or you can just buy it for like two bucks. Is it ever going to end? Uh, I think you can't change your character's uh, class unless you pay for a class change. Oh, wow. Or remake your character. And so back when uh, Dragon Age Reborn uh, released in 2020, 
Uh, in 2020. <laughs> so it's been a few years, too. Um, and the next installment has finally come out in uh, 2024. The next installment was microtransactions. Well, <laughs> I've heard the mechanics are fun. I've heard the game is fun. It's just what is modern game design if not microtransactions? Gambling. 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 I don't you see know. ads for it yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It's taking advantage of people. Okay, Ron. So that's Dragon Age Rebirth. That was a happy note. I wonder yeah. is if Dragon Age Rebirth's in the works. <laughs> maybe maybe they should rebirth the series. That was, uh, and I don't want to talk trash. I haven't looked too much. Like I, haven't want, I don't want to talk trash too much about the new Dragon Age because I haven't yeah. played it or anything. I just know that's the scandal that came with the game was mm-hmm. there was a lot of microtransactions attached to it. Mm-hmm. So the game itself could be a heck ton of fun, but I don't know. So... That's the joke, microtransactions. And we're on to our last portion of game releases, the mobile gaming revolution. Revolution. So, Ron, Uh, what do you think about mobile gaming? um, Well, it's an evolving landscape. Uh, There's, you know, releases. I think there's a Diablo game that's canon that was released. Diablo Immortal. Yeah, 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 it's canon. Talk about microtransactions. Part of the lore. Talk about micro, m- microtransactions. They got him even did, in the main. I watched uh, Josh relations. Strife Hayes' video about this. Love him. He's a saint. Go watch his stuff. He's so good at dissecting games and what makes them tick. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's a fun game. Monetized to Oblivion. Wrong series. Wrong, monetized to, I don't know, Candy Crush. Wow, that's pretty rough. <laughs> there are apparently 22 different resources in the game. They, and you can buy a bunch of them, and they're like hidden mechanics. So they're, you have a very small chance to get legendaries in the game, but there are these, uh, when you do a rift, there are these oh, gems yeah. that you can plug in to increase the chance to get legendaries. And it shows three slots. What? Wait. But you can actually put in 10. It hides it from you. What? Yeah. What? When and did Diablo stop being about Diablo? I can't tell you anything about this story. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> so, mobile gaming revolution. But yes, mobile Great gaming, stuff. you know, like Diablo and we're all derailed a little bit there, are okay. um, rife. For microtransactions are like are ripe for it. That's the word for it. And so, rife and th- with ripe for. R- yeah. Okay. Yeah. Works. It works. <laughs> uh, all works. Uh, and so that that's just the one that's fresh on my mind because I just watched that video. Yeah. You know? And oh, to finish that, mm-hmm. so shows three slots. You can plug them in, and then when you plug in three, it opens up that you can actually put ten in, and then it has. Um, abusive pricing structure within the shop to convince you to actually buy the 10 and then if you play through one of these dungeons if you have none in there very like low likelihood that you'll get legendaries but if you put all 10 in someone one on his stream donated so he could and it's just just raining legendaries literally pouring out and to get those gems on free to play you can get like seven a month or something really low like that or you can pay 20 bucks so mobile gaming revolution revolution that's what i'm hearing We've revolutionized from money making revolutionized money making and in his video he says that 56 percent of gamers are actually mobile gamers so it's, most of them it's most of them it's higher than all pc console everything combined it's and so it like makes sense that we the psychology of gambling and then the ease of access of phone mm-hmm. games mm-hmm. there's something there I don't know what but I feel like there's something there Victor make it easy for them you know? just, just uh, here's a free loot box just one First one. You don't have to go to the casino anymore. No. You can do it right that's from so, your phone. Yep, that's it, right? And so I will say to talk about the good, mm-hmm. ease of access, like you said, the accessibility. Mm-hmm. I can play RuneScape on my phone super easily. It's Love well that. optimized. Love that. RuneScape I is... play Pokemon ROMs right. on mm-hmm. my phone. I don't have to go get the Game Boy. That might be illegal. Console. Should we be bringing that up? It, uh, I paid for these. Because 
ROMs are illegal if you don't own the copy of the game. I like this. Yeah. I like this. Because I actually own the games. Like, I own Emerald version. And I'm not telling any of you to play to play ROMs. Uh, but the ease of access to be able to play, to have these experiences in your part, especially as phones get more and more advanced. Like, it's crazy. I think my phone is probably more advanced than the computer. The desktop I played WoW on back in 2004. Like... I think you can play some PlayStation games. I on think your you phone probably too. can. It's wild. Like, and RuneScape's so low intensity, I can just play it just fine. So that ease of access, I think, is huge. Mm -hmm. And like, it's low investment time. Mm -hmm. Short games you can play on the bus. You don't even have to write a story for train, it. You know? Between classes, mm -hmm. things like that. So mobile gaming's here to stay. I would just say, you know. Be wary of these abusive ones. Yeah, and abusive practices. Abusive practices. And just be wary. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of good ones out there. Oh, there definitely are. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. The ones that I just referenced aren't mobile games. <laughs> They've just been ported, right? They've just been ported over, right? So am I a mobile gamer if I'm just playing ports of PC and console games? I think so. You're taking them on the go. I feel like that's the biggest part of it. Okay. Is that ease of access and that it's like on your phone mm -hmm. and you're mobile. You can okay. play it out and about. You're not tethered to a socket a, or a Wi-Fi. Yeah. Here's a question. So mm -hmm. mobile gaming. Mm -hmm. Is this phone exclusive or does this count like the Switch and DS, handheld consoles like that? I'd say the revolutionary part is not to do with handheld consoles okay i would say that a lot of innovations came from those but the actual revolution is like you said the majority of gamers are using a phone mm. to game mm -hmm. like that's revolutionary that's never happened before yeah. that's redefining gaming as we know it they're seeing more and more phone games being ported to pc and more and more games that are aimed at consoles and like PC being designed in a more phone, like that's the paradigm, we're yeah. in, right? It's like phone game type of stuff. Exactly. Right? And thinking back to Diablo Immortal, like that had so much potential to be just wonderful mm -hmm. for the Diablo community mm -hmm. because it just opened up Diablo to so many people that just don't have the ability to play computer. I, I know that like nine out of ten people in my life do not have a computer that could play like the most recent Diablo release, right? Exactly. Diablo 4, I think. Are we have 4 now? Yes. 4. 4. The Diablo 2, 3, Immortal. Is that, is that 3.5? I would say it's 3.5. 3. Okay, so Diablo 4, yeah. But the, the whole, like... But I know that at least half of them play games on their phone. Without a doubt, they play uh, like brain teasing puzzle games, crosswords, Sudoku, mm -hmm. like simpler stuff. Yeah. Or f words with friends, you know, all this like easy to get into type of mm -hmm. games, but they're not exploitative. Yeah. It's like they see the exploitation and they know to avoid it they, because yep. they're savvy. Yeah. yeah. And with Diablo Immortal, I understand why Blizzard's like money mobile gaming we want to get in on that it makes sense it makes sense to want to get in on that but include your community that's what they didn't do because mm -hmm. when they revealed it there's the infamous <laughs> uh blizzcon interview where the guys said uh okay so do you have plans of porting this to pc and the guy goes, oh, I can't remember his name. Jalen Brack, right? Something like that. And he goes, well, you all have phones, don't you? So dismissive. <sighs> so condescending. Oof. Oof. You just alienated your whole community. Be Blizzard is PC gaming. Yeah. And you're trying to open up to a whole new avenue. You've just segmented your community. Mm -hmm. And you turned them against you. Yeah. Wow. One, like, wow. If they just, just said, okay, this is going to be on PC, oof. this is going to be on phone, there's going to be cross-play, the monetization's going to be limited to cosmetics, 
That would have been a win. <laughs> hands down. Hound, hands down win. Yeah. So the possibilities for mobile gaming are huge and are just huge for the communities out there if you don't fumble the ball. But it doesn't matter because... Diablo Immortal has made like a billion dollars or something stupid, and it's made millions of dollars, so whatever. I feel like we're spinning anyway. off on a grudge tangent instead of yeah, Mobile crazy. Gaming Revolution. But no, like that's the good and the bad wrapped up. Seriously, I encapsulated know, by one game. Yeah, so that was fresh on my mind, so. <laughs> uh, I, I like it. I played it before bad, but yeah. I know what to stay away from, and unfortunately some people don't. And uh, I feel like that was a, another great topic from the AI there. Yeah, Got us good. fired up. A very good one. Heck yeah. With a bad one right before it. Mm -hmm. Dragon Age Rebirth. Okay. We don't need that. Oh yeah, get out of here. Get gone. All right, Ron, we're almost to the bottom of the hour, and we have segment three. What is our segment three? Segment three is the community corner. There's no corners near me, so uh, we're just going to no. proceed. So this is the... Fan art showcase. We don't have one of those. Oh man, where is our fan art? I thought we had some. Quick, uh, go and Google <laughs> fan art of your favorite game. Look at that. Yeah, look, check that out. Um, got then, nothing for you. That's it. Yeah. Um, our our artist, uh, Savannah Savannah's Art Studio. Yeah. Sh check out her YouTube channel. She does a lot of fan art. She does Pokemon fan art, and Pokemon D&D &D are mostly her thing. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm, and she's a fan of the show, so check that out. Um, we did not prepare for this one. No. This one this one expected us to read ahead, this topic. The AI expected us to look ahead on. Well, the AI should know better. I never read. I expected it to be ready for it. I'm always ahead. told that AI can do it all. Yeah, I'm illiterate. Why isn't the AI doing my job yeah, for like, me? Yeah, what are these squiggles? Is this German or? I think it's, um... I can't read it. Hieroglyphs. <laughs> yeah. All right, enough with that bit. Right. Up next, <laughs> uh, gaming events calendar. Ron, do you know any gaming events coming up soon? Uh... There was a gaming convention in my town a week ago. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, One, oh, wow. 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 A week, um, a whole week ago. I don't think they do E3 anymore. No, I think that's dead. The only, only one I know of is uh, Games Done Quick. Summer G Games Done Quick. Oh, beautiful organization. I love, I them. love them. Love them. They do all the money goes towards charity that they raise. The, and it's a speed running convention that lasts a whole week mm -hmm. and they just get speedrunners from all the different genres you can usually check out the schedule month, months in advance they usually plan way ahead but they always have a Zelda game they always have Pokemon game they always always have Mario and they always have Sonic so they always have the popular stuff and then in the middle of the night you're going to see the weird stuff because it's streamed 24 hours a day for a whole week Incredible work. And if you choose to go to that convention, they have places where you can play the games. You can have a hall you can watch in. You've got like practice rooms. They just have gaming stations. So that that's one that I recommend for sure. I, I, I couldn't have said it better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I recommend it too. Check them out. Mm -hmm. uh, heavy recommend. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I think that's all we have for segment three. What's up next, Ron, at the bottom of the hour here, well, our yeah. final segment. Yeah, we're scraping in at the bottom here, <laughs> and this is going to be our, uh, we should do this as a regular update for our episodes. I think so. Esports update. <laughs> I All think, right. I think so, yes, 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 yes. This describes us perfectly. This describes Alex and Sarah perfectly. Esports, we're esports commentators, we're esports enjoyers, but we're mostly Overwatch this is a lie that the AI has constructed. <laughs> it's definitely constructed. Uh, AI did construct this for us, and it mm -hmm. wanted us to uh, look at the Overwatch League finals, recap those, but... Um, I don't really have an interest in that. No, no, no. I'm sure it was great. They also want us to look at the Dota 2 International. Oof. Like, preview the teams. Okay. Go through the players, which 
Hmm. These are good toppings if you wonderful. are into these yeah. and franchises. But I think what's more apt here, Ron, is what do you think the appeal of esports is? Oh, man. So this is one that I've struggled with for a while is like talking to people about like are video games sports can they even be sports mm -hmm. and it's a very divided subject yeah. but the appeal of esports is essentially being able to compete mm -hmm. I don't know, competition is fun and satisfying oh yeah you really can't get away from that and then what's more fun is getting Tons of people around and having arenas and like stakes yep. and money and like mm -hmm. personalities. Well, that's something that I found kind of funny about StarCraft uh, esports yeah, is that yeah. a lot of the people like they would try to be like, you know, have more personality. Same with Overwatch and stuff like have more personalities, but they're just like. I just want to play the game, mm -hmm. man. Stop trying to build drama where there isn't any. Yeah, it's because I mean the people that put on these. Uh, put on the esports are trying to tell a story, get people to watch, right. make a story, create. I said story, to, but create rivalries, make people engaged and interested in the players. But a lot of the gamers, I'm just trying to play right. really good. And that, <laughs> and that will arise naturally from mm -hmm. having really good players. Yep. I remember the Smash Brothers like scene way back when. Mm -hmm. There's a whole documentary about it that's like 13 parts, and how they had these crazy personalities and egos and stuff but that's because they had so much time to build up this community mm. and like there's a lot of winners and losers and and that's where you get the more personalities you know it was more individual fighting games are more individual driven yeah. i feel like in esports and i really enjoy that mm -hmm. aspect of it is and i feel like the team sports kind of get away from having personalities sure. and like big egos because you're on a team you've mm -hmm. got to just work together to do the thing to beat the other side yeah right? you have a big ego you lose the match you're i mean you're not going to be invited back right mm -hmm. like if you lose because there's thousands of dollars on the line for these professional players right and a big thing too i think people are say no no they're not sports because there's the physicality aspect mm -hmm. to what we think of as sports but to me this level of gaming is very physical very physical can you react that quickly right and i can't that in itself is a filter for esports yeah after a certain age your reflexes start decreasing mm -hmm. So then you stop being as good as you have to be to compete in these domains. And that's when you hear those players becoming the commentators. Because mm -hmm. they still know it all, but I can't, I can't compete with the 14-year-olds. Right. And that's just natural. And so mm -hmm. there's almost a higher level of physical requirement mm -hmm. because that window is so much smaller. That's a good way to. It is a very small window, isn't it? Of mm -hmm. like that peak reaction time. What would you th What would you say that is? That age window. Dude, I would probably say like teenager, like 18, 16 or something yeah. like that to about twenty four. Yeah. Okay. Twenty five. That's like your golden years. Like that's where like, you know, you see all of these players in like Korea and stuff. They're mm -hmm. always around that age. Once yeah. you get past that, you start aging out. I yeah, feel. I think so. And I think I think the appeal of esports, because mm -hmm. I used to watch a little bit of League of Legends stuff when so, I was into the game, yeah. is just like any other sport, you like the game. Mm -hmm. You want to see people do it really well. At the highest level. At the highest highest peak. Like for, oh, yeah. for me, watching these players play League, I just be mind blown I'm like my hand can't do that mm -hmm. how are they doing that so right. it's really cool and you find people to root for you invest your personalities into these yeah. teams and uh, another physical argument for the physical your thoughts may not be physical but isn't your brain it's true doesn't it exist yeah. in physical space mm -hmm. so I don't know I feel like your brain also has to be capable of moving at speeds mm -hmm. that not everyone can handle would yeah, and that obviously chess is not an esport, but they say chess players just from playing long matches of chess burn like four thousand calories a day. Mm -hmm. Right, so you are 
working really hard. So I think a good definition of sports is working really hard with your team to win some sort of competition. And that just sounds like sports. It sounds like sports like to me. We yeah. see, we've even seen esports played on ESPN. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. nope. I, I've seen some of that with um, whatever. Blizzard has one, mm -hmm. a MOBA. It's not Defense of the Ancients anymore. <laughs> Heroes of the Storm. That's Heroes of the Storm. Yeah, 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 they played that on ESPN. And that's super cool. Uh, so I thought that would be um, more interesting <laughs> than us trying to stumble our way through Overwatch through and recap, Dota 2. Because yeah. I played a lot of Overwatch. Not well. And I played like three characters because that's how I play. Played Dota 2. Yeah. Not well. And one character. So I can't, I can't really talk about this without getting some research. But what I will say, mm. what I like about these sports and these teams, these leagues... Is that it keeps games alive? Yes, right, way past their prime. Like Smash Bros, Smash Bros Melee, people. That's people. That's the most popular Smash Bros. It's still around. It's still around. They still, still have full conventions, and people are still learning new things about the game. Oh, constantly. Just the uh, barrier to entry is learning all of the glitches that you mm -hmm. use to fight. Like wave dashing yep. is one that's like. You have a frame in order to yeah. hit that mark and pull it off. Yeah. And that's so cool that these old... 2001, mm -hmm. I think, Melee came out. Yeah. People are still discovering new mechanics within the game. And, the, and what's so cool is the metas are still shifting. Mm -hmm. Right. I watched a video recent. I don't know how recently it is, but one of those documentaries where, like, somehow this guy, he's like, I don't care about the meta. I want Jigglypuff to be good. Mm-hmm. So I you don't found care. a way to make. You found it. a way to make it the best character, mm -hmm. and nobody else can do it but him. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> but he min max so hard, he put so much time, and he made it the best. So I think that's a huge appeal of uh, esports is keeping these games alive. Like, how long yes. has Overwatch One been out? And why is there a sequel already? And why is there a that people don't play? Like, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason Overwatch is still the shots the league. fired. <laughs> So, yeah, I thought that'd be more interesting than us trying to fumble our way through that. But right around that it. is the end here. What did you think about our AI episode? Um, I think it had some good ideas, Victor, but it's got a <laughs> long way to go if it's looking to be a professional uh, before it uh, makes TV waves. show writer. <laughs> before it makes waves, before it unlocks its true potential, <laughs> synergy, synergy. It's got to figure out... <laughs> Uh, how not to lie and actually source real information if that's yeah. what it's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but I mean, solid stuff. I think it was a fun time. It definitely made us talk and think about topics we wouldn't normally. Right. Right. And it given me some like kernels of interest mm -hmm. that we could maybe pursue. Oh, for sure. Like mm -hmm. I think doing a whole e. I'm actually interested in a whole esports episode. Like what it is. Yeah. What's Why haven't the we done one? Why yet? haven't we done one? So I think that's what this has been good for is mm -hmm. ideas yeah it can't do it for us but it can give us these ideas mm -hmm. uh, so yeah that closes it out bro what was your favorite segment oh man i really liked the return to rapture <laughs> i don't know i liked the like or like when <laughs> we went off on a tangent with the revolution in mobile gaming about you know that was fun the oblo mortal <laughs> being the quintessential like this is the revolution yep <laughs> <laughs> and it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. It, this episode definitely let us just go with it. Mm -hmm. So I, li I liked that aspect of it. It wasn't as detailed uh, as some of our others, but that was super fun. So our closing thoughts. As they wrap up another episode of Gamers Roundup, Alex and Sarah reflect on the ever-changing landscape of game and the excitement that lies ahead. Wow. Uh, uh, the innovative technology and immersive storytelling the world of gaming continues to captivate, inspire players of all backgrounds. So wow. that's it. Thank you for joining us on Actually Shared Discovery. Uh, if you have any questions, send them to Shared Discovery Show at gmail.com. Thanks again to BCTV for allowing us to put on this production. Yes, thank you. And as we go, thank you for joining us in episode 51, the AI episode. And make sure you have some fun. Play some games and be kind to others and take a swear on. Riches must be divided, but real wealth can be shared. Bye. Bye. Play esports. <laughs>